An algorithm is a formula, a step-by-step -step procedure to be followed in order to obtain the solution to the problem. To be useful as a basis for writing program, the algorithm must arrive at a correct solution within a finite time, be clear, precise, and unambiguous, be in a format which lends itself to an elegant implementation in a programming language. An important tool used in developing a solution and in preparation of an algorithm is the pseudocode, among many others. Pseudocode means writing the program logic in a simple English-like language. Logic depicted using these tools can be written using any programming language. In other words, these are generic tools. A pseudocode uses language or statements which are bridges between actual programming and ordinary English. In a pseudocode, each step is written using a simple English phrase that is also called a construct. Some conventions used while writing pseudocodes are All statements in a loop should be indented. All alphanumeric values should be enclosed in single or double quotes. The beginning and end of a pseudocode are marked with keywords like start and end respectively. All statements must include certain keywords which denote an operation. The input statement. The following verbs can be used to accept or input data from the keyboard or from an existing file. Accept. Read. For example, accept name, read name. The output statements. The following verbs can be used to output data. Write. Display. For example, write gross pay, display gross pay. Example 1. Accept two numbers, add them and display the result. The steps for the above problem statement are Start Accept N1 Accept N2 Sum is equal to N1 plus N2 Display sum N this is an example for a simple pseudocode of the first problem statement. It may be noticed that whether we input n1 first or n2 first is immaterial. The statement sum is equal to n1 plus n2 cannot come before the two numbers have been input. Display sum statement must occur after sum is equal to n1 plus n2. Example 2. Mohan's salary consists of basic salary, Travelling allowance and 15% commission on the sales made. At the end of the month, we need to calculate his salary. The steps involved are Star Accept BAS underscore SAL TVL underscore SAL Sales underscore amount COM is equal to Sale underscore amount into 0 0.15 Net underscore SAL is equal to COM plus BAS underscore SAL plus TVL underscore SAL. Display net underscore SAL. N. It may be noted that here we are accepting three values. Basic salary, sales amount, and travel allowance. It is valid to use three accept statements also. Once the algorithm for a particular program is ready, we have to check the correctness of the algorithm. The algorithm checking methods are dry run, independent inspection, and structured walkthrough. Dry run is a manual method of testing an algorithm for its correctness and functionality. In this method, a table is prepared with columns for each of the variables used in the algorithm. The value of each variable is updated in the table as we proceed through the algorithm. Success of the dry run method depends upon the ability to step through the instructions exactly as a computer would execute them. Independent inspection is another method for checking the correctness of an algorithm. In this method, the specifications and the design solution are handed over to the third party. This method must be adopted as it brings objectivity in the design algorithm. This method involves a presentation of the algorithm to a team. No member of this team would have been engaged in any activity during the earlier phase. This team then points out inconsistencies and errors, if any, in the algorithm. The solution is then either accepted completely or after slight modification. 
The top-down approach implies planning the program as a hierarchy of modules. This is one of the best known algorithm design tools. It is also called functional decomposition or stepwise refinement. This method first presents a solution to the overall problem using only three or four steps. Each step in the first solution is then broken down into further sub-steps. This process repeats several times, breaking down the steps further and further each time. Each iteration produces a more detailed solution to the original problem. When the steps cannot be broken down further, the algorithm is complete. The top-down design works well because the programmer does not get overwhelmed with details initially. Obviously, programs that are thousands of lines long can become very complex. For programmers, it is impossible to keep all the program details in mind when starting to develop an algorithm. Top-down design automatically produces modules in an algorithm. A module is a group of instructions that performs a specific function. Suppose that you want to write an algorithm to print invoices. The first iteration of top-down designs produces the following task. Retrieve customer details. Retrieve all order details for that customer. Calculate the total invoice amount. Print the invoice. The next iteration refines each step. For example, the third step can be defined as follows. Add 5% interest to orders one month overdue. Add 10% interest to orders two months and older. Sum the orders. Add sales tax. By decomposing the original instruction, modules such as the print invoice step become evident. For each customer that has been retrieved, the main algorithm calls a module to print the final invoice. To bridge the gap between algorithms and programming languages, you use the pseudocode. Programming begins with the top main module. In order to support the discipline of top-down programming, the following basic structured programming constructs are followed in programming. Sequence, Selection, and Repetition Sequence indicates that if there is no intervening control structure, the flow of control normally passes from one instruction to the next in sequence. Selection indicates a decision from among several options that is you may branch out to one of multiple locations within the program depending on the decision. Repetition or looping constructs occur when a set of instructions are to be repeated several times. It saves the trouble of writing the same set of statements repeatedly. Sequential A grocery store gives discounts to its regular customers. The discounts are given irrespective of the amount of purchase. The store gives two types of discounts. A trade discount of 20% on the total value of the purchase and a cash discount of 5% on the value of the purchase less than trade discount. The pseudocode for the above problem statement is star. Accept P code, P rate, P quantity. P code is for purchase code, P rate is the rate of purchase, P quantity is the quantity of purchase. Gross underscore amount is equal to P quantity into P rate. Trade underscore DIS is equal to 20 by 100 into gross underscore amount. Cash underscore DIS is equal to 5 by 100 into gross underscore amount minus trade underscore DIS. Net amount is equal to gross underscore amount minus trade underscore DIS plus cash underscore DIS. Display gross underscore amount, trade underscore DIS, cash underscore DIS, net amount. End. Here, if we number the steps of the pseudocode, we end up with seven steps. In this type of construct, step two is executed after step one and step 3 after step 1 and step 2. Nowhere the steps are skipped. The last statement executed is end. Selection is used when the execution of a particular set of statements is based on a condition. The selection construct is always used with the if statement. The if statement is used when there is more than one course of action to be taken based on certain conditions. Each if statement must end with an end if statement as follows. If condition statement 1 statement 2 end it. For example, 
Sara Company gives a 10% commission to its salesman if their monthly sales crosses rupees 10,000 or more. Calculate the commission at the end of the month. Star. Com is equal to zero. Accept sales amount. If sales amount is greater or equal to 10,000, com is equal to sales amount into 0 0.1. End it. Display com. End. Here the statement com is equal to sales amount into 0 0.1 is executed only after the sales amount value is checked. The if statement returns true or false after evaluating the condition embedded. Depending upon the value returned, the statements nestled between if and end if are executed. Repetition construct or iteration are used when it is required to perform the same set of operations more than once. For example, Add the number 2 to the variable x three times. This can be written in three steps. x is equal to x plus 2. x is equal to x plus 2. And x is equal to x plus 2. Imagine the length of the code if we had to add 2 to x a thousand times. The same set of operations can be represented using an iteration construct in a simple way. Iteration constructs are called as loops. There are many iteration constructs specific to programming language. The most general one is while condition do statement 1 statement 2 end do. The while statement is evaluated first. Until the condition returns true, the statements embedded between the do and end do are executed. When the condition evaluates to false, the control then passes the statement after end do. We shall now write a pseudocode using the while loop to add numbers 1 to 100, that is 100 addition. Start, m sum is equal to 0, times is equal to 1, while times is less than or equal to 100. Do, m sum is equal to m sum plus times, times is equal to times plus 1, n do, n. Inside the while loop, the times variable is incremented. So while executing the while loop, the value in times is checked. Whenever it is below or equal to 100, the value of m sum is changed. The variable times is incremented by 1, so the loop executes 100 times. 100 additions are performed with different values. But the code is written only once. In every pseudocode, we have seen a vow we notice that there are one or more accept statements followed by output statements and also some calculations. This means to solve a problem on the machine, we need to input some data, process the data as required and display the desired result. You must understand a problem before you can write an algorithm as a solution to it. The problem is normally presented in the form of a statement or requirement. Every problem has the following defining element. Input Process and output. The process contains the actions that transform some given input into the desired output. Nouns, adjectives and adverbs in the problem statement normally describe input and output. Verbs such as find, calculate and sort are used to identify processes. Sometimes the input may not be explicitly mentioned in the problem and you will have to determine the input necessary to produce the output. After all the elements of a problem have been identified, they are listed in a table. The table has three columns, input, process and output. You can then use the table to help you to write an algorithm. The processes of the table become statements in the algorithm. Input and output elements become arguments for the statement. In programming statements, arguments are comparable to objects in the grammar of human language sentences. So in the code, accept, sales amount, sales amount is the object or argument. Now imagine that you need to solve this problem. Couriers have to travel a given distance within a given time and you have to calculate the speed they have to drive at. Distance and time are the input elements of this problem. And speed is the output element. You need processes to obtain the input elements of the problem. So for every input element, there will be a statement such as read distance. The final output element has to be presented to the user. Therefore, 
the table must contain a process to deliver the output such as display speed. You need to calculate the speed at which the couriers must travel to cover the given distance in the given time. So there must be an entry in the process column to calculate the value of the variable speed. Suppose you have to write an algorithm that asks the user to enter two words and the total number of letters in both words should be displayed to the user. Suppose that you have to write an algorithm that calculates and prints the tax payable on an invoice total. It must also print the final invoice amount. Once you have defined the problem, you can begin to write the algorithm. You will probably need to rework your algorithm several times. Pseudocode is flexible and as such easy to change. Algorithms have the following characteristics. They begin with a name. Instructions are indented for readability. Processes in a table become statements in an algorithm. Input and output in tables become arguments for statements. They end with an end statement. Every algorithm has to start with a name. The name has to describe what the algorithm does. It usually starts with a verb and ends with a noun, as shown here. All the instructions between the algorithm name and the end statement are indented for readability. Every time a new control structure is introduced, it has to be left indented. At the end of the control structure, the indentation returns to the previous level. Each processing step in the defining table results in one or more pseudocode instructions. The items in the input and output columns become arguments for the instructions. The end statement concludes an algorithm. Let us suppose that we want to write a program that converts a distance in kilometers to a distance in miles. There are 0.625 miles in every kilometer. The input to the algorithm is distance in kilometers. The output from calculation is miles. You need a process to get the kilometers from the user. And you need a process to display the calculated miles. The verb converts in the problem statement indicates a process. So you have to calculate the number of miles that is equivalent to the given number of kilometers. From the table you can now write the following algorithms. It asks for a distance in kilometers from the user, converts that number into miles and displays it. The program that converts kilometers to miles would typically execute as shown here. Any problem can be broken into three stages. Input, Process and Output. Input stage is the phase where all the raw data required for processing is input to the program using the programming specific input statements. Output stage is the phase where all the process data is displayed using the programming specific output statements. Process stage is all the calculations which convert the raw data into information. Given a problem, we have to identify the raw data that has to be input, the processes that will convert the input into information or output. For example, Mohan's salary consists of basic salary, traveling allowance and 15% commission on the sales made. At the end of the month, we need to calculate his salary. The steps involved are Start Accept BAS underscore SAL TVL underscore SAL Sales underscore amount COM is equal to sale underscore amount into 0 0.15 NET underscore SAL is equal to COM plus BAS underscore SAL plus TVL underscore SAL Display NET underscore SAL N According to the problem, basic salary and traveling expense along with the sales amount has to be input because it varies from salesperson to person and month to month input. Once the sales amount is input, commission is always 15% of sales amount. Net salary, that is net underscore SAL, is the sum of basic traveling expense and commission and this is processed salary. And displaying the net salary is outputting the processed salary. Out. Okay.